Hi, this is Cycle 2, Week 12 Science Constellations. This is a really, really cool demonstration uh, of, of practical effects of constellations. Um, constellations are, are, of course, uh, groups of stars. We'll talk more about that in just a second. Um, but, but this is a great demonstration because there's lots and lots of grammar that can be put in for the littlest ones all the way up to the big kids. There are uh, lots of opportunities and lots of different ways uh, that you can do this demonstration so that everybody uh, can have fun. And most fundamentally, this is a great demonstration uh, of the power of God. This is a great demonstration of, of his majesty and his glory. When we look at, at something like the constellations and we consider you know, space and the stars and our viewpoint from here on earth, um, it's just humbling. Uh, and it's an important point to mention uh, to the students. It really drives home um, Psalm um, 19, verse 1. The heavens declare the glory of God. The sky above proclaims his handiwork. It's so true, and this is a great uh, demonstration of it. There are, as I said, there's lots of different ways uh, to do this demonstration, but the purpose of the demonstration is to give your, your students a, a real-life experience with constellations during the daytime. Uh, and so uh, there, are, there are, again, many different ways to do it. One way that we've done in the past is to take a simple jar with some foil and a little tea light inside, and then the, the students, your students can poke holes with... Um, with a toothpick in the foil, and then you can turn the light on and, and put it in, and then they can see the effect uh, of of the constellations that they make. They they if you, they, you've got older kids, you could have them actually make real constellations, but you could have younger kids, then then they can just poke some holes and make their own constellations. Uh, in this video, it's also cool. I'm going to turn the lights out for you uh, and, and back on a little bit. So let me demonstrate this particular way uh, of of illustrating constellations. I hope that comes through well on the video. Uh, our five-year-old, in full disclaimer, made this one, so it's not an actual constellation, but uh, it's still very cool. A good uh, demonstration. That's just one way the, uh, that you could do it. You could do it with um, toilet paper holders or paper towel holders. That if you capped on uh, on one end, you could have a flashlight on the other side. So again, the students could poke holes around it and make a constellation. Um, that that would be one easy way to do it. Uh, a popular way, I'm told, uh, to do it in the the CC community at large is to take a large um, black plastic bag. Uh, you know, big enough um, such that students can actually lay underneath it and it can be inflated either with a fan or, or something similar. Uh, and then on the outside, the, the directors, the tutors can, uh, with, with previous work, they can poke holes and make actual constellations. And then just the ambient light of the room coming in uh, displays it. So that, that's one way um, to, do, to do it as well. Um, but there are lots of, of different options. Um, those are all sort of home-based options, but there are commercial options available as well. So if my lovely assistant will move this way. Then here is a, a model, a, a, a solar system, a constellation model that our director is letting me uh, borrow for my demonstration uh, for you today. This is, um, this is very neat, very, very simple. Uh, they come in a wide range of prices, so you have lots of different options uh, of, of what you want to do. So again, I'm going to turn the lights off, and I'm going to start here, so we'll project now uh, onto the ceiling. Whoa. So these are the stars of uh, North America. If, if you have something like this, and in fact, this one actually rotates while we're at it. If you have something like this, a commercially available option, it's well worth pointing out that when your students go outside at night, they're not going to see that many stars uh, for most places that you live because of simple light pollution. Um, but that would be a good question to ask. Do you see that many stars at night when you go outside? Okay. Why, why not? What kinds of things? Uh, might be possible explanations uh, of why. Um, some of it, of course, is meteorological effects, cloud cover, things like that. Depending on where you are, this is the North American sky. If you live in um, below the equator, you have a completely different sky uh, to look at each night. But even if you live above the equator, unless you live in a pretty remote area or you move out to a remote area, you won't see anywhere near that number of stars just due to light pollution. But there are lots of different ways. There are lots of different ways that you can demonstrate, give your students a practical feeling uh, for constellations. 
I think there's a couple of grammar terms that I would suggest that you uh, introduce, especially for your older kids. Uh, asterisms would be the first. So not every constellation that we think of in the sky is a true constellation. A lot of them are asterisms, which is simply a collection of stars uh, that form a shape. The most common example of that is the Big Dipper. That's not a constellation. Uh, it's part of a constellation, but the Big Dipper itself is an asterism. It's part of the constellation Ursula Major, uh, the Big Bear. Uh, as it were. Something else uh, that's important to point out to your students is the pole star, what we call here in North America the North Star, because we're above the equator. Uh, and so our um, planet's axis that, that we can most easily envision uh, in the night sky is the, the pole, the North Pole. So as we have the globe of the Earth, there's the, the line that the Earth rotates about. And so uh, that line appears to point to a, a star, Polaris, we call it the North Star, we call it. And so all of the stars of the night sky rotate or appear to rotate about Polaris. And that's uh, a cool uh, grammar fact. Uh, we're gonna illustrate that here uh, in just a second, but I wanna make a suggestion. So as homeschoolers, most of us have a book or two uh, lying around, uh, but if you have room for one more, and if you have an interest in um, constellations, if you have an interest in, in the cosmos, or if you have kids that do, I highly, highly recommend this book. It's called The Stars, A New Way to See Them. It's by H.A. Ray, R-E-Y. Uh, a fun fact, H.A. Ray is the man who invented and created Curious George. And this is an excellent book uh, that, that he's created. There are a lot of good things uh, in this book. Uh, I'll, I'll just show you a couple. Again, if you're interested in stars, he has all of these pictures of the night sky. This is the North American night sky. He has a key that tells you what time of year you can find it. He even has drawn on it approximate longitude, uh, sorry, latitude lines, so you know based on where you are what you should be able to see. And he gives you a blank to practice on, and then the one over here with all of the constellations filled out on it. So that alone uh, is super, super cool. Uh, but there's another cool point here that I want to make. Um, another good grammar fact is that constellation shapes change, right? So as we, we've discussed previously, um, the universe is expanding, uh, and so the stars are moving away from each other, the galaxies are moving away from each other, and so from our vantage point on Earth, the shape of the stars in our lifetime, or even our grandparents' lifetime, is approximately constant. For example, this book here, The Big Dipper. Right. It's approximately constant, but those uh, that collection of stars, they're, they're in fact moving independently of one another. And so he's, he's showing an illustration that estimates if we were to go back in time, what the Big Dipper would have looked like, uh, again, modern day here. And then if we would go down in time, we see uh, the change. And so again, those things are changing simply because the stars are moving. Uh, and so I think that's um, kind of a cool, a cool fact um, that can be uh, in introduced. And then finally, uh, I think a really good question, especially for your bigger kids, uh, is to ask which part of the night sky changes the most? So when we're looking at the night sky, we really need to think about it in, in the directions, north, south, east, and west. Uh, and so the question would be is which parts are changing the most? For those of us here in North America, it's the southern end of the sky that is changing uh, dramatically. And so I'm going to illustrate uh, a fact about our sky uh, in that with, um, with an umbrella. Okay, so I have an umbrella. I have on my umbrella two constellations, triangle and circle. They are very close to the center of axis of the umbrella, which is um, the North Star in this example. And so these are circumpolar constellations because they're very close to the pole star. And in fact, as the night sky progresses, again, the night sky appears to rotate about the pole star, but these constellations never go below the horizon uh, of the table. In real life, uh, the Big Dipper and Cassiopeia are two common examples of um, circumpolar constellations uh, here in North America. And so we can illustrate, then as we rotate, as the night moves, the position of those stars move, but they stay above the horizon. And then look over here. We have a new constellation rectangle, and here it comes. It rises. And then as long as the night sky lasts long enough, right, we can see that constellation Oops. go all the way back below the horizon. 
right? But our circle and triangle constellations never moved um, below the horizon because they are, in fact, circumpolar. Uh, and so then if we're looking into the night sky, this means we're looking um, in the north direction. And that's why I say it changes the least. Because remember, in, in the... In the real um, night sky, it, it's not uh, you know an, an umbrella on this side. It's really more like a dome, right? So it's not just an umbrella here. It's a huge dome that moves, and so the horizon is just what you can see. And so as we're looking north, everything is revolving around the pole star, the North Star in North America. But that entire southern side of the sky is changing dramatically. Uh, and, and there are no circumpolar stars in the southern sky in North America. If we, fall, if we go below the equator, there are certainly constellations that appear to rotate below the, the southern pole uh, star. But here in North America, Polaris, the, the, the North Star, all the constellations appear to rotate uh, around it. So it's the southern end of the sky then that changes, and that's why. And you can illustrate that in part uh, with something like an umbrella. There are lots of other things that you could do uh, with constellations, but this is a great demonstration, a great chance to give the kids a chance to make their own constellation, especially for the younger kids. For the bigger kids, ask them to make Orion or something like that, something that's pretty well known, a uh, constellation here in North America. Uh, and, and, and see um, if, if they are able to, uh, to, to punch those holes and to, to make that shape. Um, and, and then talk about all of this grammar. Talk about how the stars move around the pole star they appear to, uh, how the southern sky is changing the most, uh, circumpolar uh, constellations, there's all kinds of things. It's a very, very rich demonstration, uh, and, and it's a great demonstration. This is Cycle 2, Week 12, Science Constellations.